Welcome to Pathway to Peace Bible Class. My name is Carrie Rogers, and this beautiful woman in pink is my lovely wife. Eileen Rogers. And yes, friends, we are so excited. I am delighted to be in your living room, wherever you are. I'm delighted to be with you today so we can study the Word of God today. Again, class, you know this Word can do so many things. It can change your life. It can give you an extreme, extreme makeover, a makeover in which you will have, have vitality and strength and energy spiritually, mentally, and physically. It can do so many things in your life, friend. So go ahead, pick it up. Let's study the Word of God together. Today, we're actually going to, going to continue our health series. We've been talking about health from the Word of God, and this is our owner's manual, friends. This is our owner's manual. Again, friends, are you feeling tired right now? Are you feeling a little tired? Are you feeling tired? Not really. I'm not feeling tired. <laughs> I have some strength, but it, some people may be feeling a little worn out right now. You just, just got back home from work. You, you may be stressed out. Things in your life may be going 150 miles per hour, seven days a week. I've been there, friend. I know what you mean. I've been there. But do you want to have more energy, vitality, even though you're going 150 miles per hour? Do you want to have energy? Slow things down a little bit. Or do you just want to have a new start in life, friend? Do you want to have a new start? Well, friend, there's hope for you. Help is on the way. You can feel revived. You can feel alive, regardless of your age. Yes, if you're 61 now, you can feel 16 again. Yes, you can. And I'm not selling you a bottle of pills. No, I'm not. I'm not selling you a Get Healthy Quick program for $9.95. No, we're not going to do that today. I'm just going to sell you the Word of God and what it has in it. So that's totally free. It's free, friend. And the only thing you have to do is make a decision. So I encourage you today to study with us today. You will be greatly, greatly blessed. Elaine, before we start our study, open us up with a prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead us in our prayer today, lead us in our study today, and help us to have a better health, better life. Amen. Dear most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, as we continue this study on keys to healthy living. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit give us an understanding from your, from your Holy Word. Help us to apply your principles to our lives and help us, Lord, to have the vital energy or the health that you desire for our lives. Lord, we claim the promise in 3 John 2 that it's your desire for us to prosper and to be in good health, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to apply these principles, Lord, so that we can have the good health that you intended for us. You've never intended, uh, intended for us to be in misery or in pain, Lord. Show us how to live and help us, Lord, to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer, Elaine. And friends, again, you have hope. And today we are continuing our health series. Today is, far, for, today is part four. It's part four of that series, Revived and Alive, Keys to Healthy Living. And we actually looked at, we're going to be looking at in this series, eight keys. That's eight keys. And we use an acronym to look at these eight keys. And that is New Start. That's N for nutrition, E for exercise, W for water, S for sunshine, T for temperance, A for air, R for rest, and T is trust and divine power. Trust and in God, friend. These are the eight keys or eight principles that we are looking at in this whole series. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to look at all eight in one program. Last program, we looked at two. We looked at exercise. We finished off with nutrition, actually, mm -hmm. and looked at exercise and water. So let's just kind of briefly review some of those things again, okay? Now, again, in for nutrition, you must eat food that gives you energy. You must eat food that gives you vitality. Not just to fill you up. Mm -hmm. It was God's blueprint for us to eat food that would feed the cells. 
not take away from the cells that will feed the body to give the body energy and vitality. And we've seen from our study that the best food sources to get energy is from a plant-based diet. And that's from fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. And we learned it from the word of God, that is actually God's original plan, his original diet for us. And if we eat those things, we will regulate our blood pressure, we will regulate our, our, our fat intake. We will actually get proteins. We'll get protein. We will get the good fat, especially from the nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what's some things we talked about exercise? What are some major things that we talked about exercise last week? Okay, in exercise, we talked about the importance of not just putting the calories in, but you need to exercise to make sure you're burning those calories off. That's right. And one of the best sources or ways to exercise is not just joining a gym, which that's fine too, but a great source of exercise is walking. And that's right. to walk uh, three to five times a week. I know the way you did it was walk an hour. I didn't walk quite an hour, but uh, walking three to five times a week for an hour a day is best. That's right. That's right. Again, friend, we just know from personal experience this plan works. God's plan works. His principles work. And all these principles must go together in the New Start plan. Mm -hmm. Now, we also looked at the W in water. We looked at water. We must have water. Our bodies are made up of 70 percent of water. So we must have water to keep things fluid in our body, not only to keep things fluid in our body, but also to clean the impurities out of our body. So that's the new in New Start, the nutrition, the exercise, the water. All those things are very vital. Now, today we're going to look at the rest of the the rest of the eight principles. We're going to look at the five principles in New Start. We're going to look at the S. T-A-R-T. We're going to look at the start. So if you want to have a new start in life, friend, join us right now. So let's go ahead and look at this fourth principle in the new start plan. And that's the S, which represents sunlight. You got to have sunlight. Sunlight is so good for you, friends. The beams of the sun. God gave us the sun for a reason, friend. And it's a great reason to have sunlight. Sunlight. Now, Friend, did you know without the beams of the sun rays shining upon our earth, if the beams of the sun didn't come upon this earth, we would not be able to survive. Sun is the sun is vital and is vital for your health. So why is sunlight so vital and important for your health and to maintain a healthy lifestyle? You know, friend, sunlight has actually got a has gotten a bad rap in the media in recent years. It said, well, don't get in the sun. You, you. But friend, let me tell you, you need the sun. Believe it or not, it is true that too much sun can be harmful. It is true, too much sun can be harmful. But the truth is, friend, the truth is, there, there, are, more, there are more benefits from the sun that outweighs any negative effects of the sun. Because there are some people that say, well, if I just go out in the sun just a little bit, it's going to harm me. But the reality is that's so far from the truth, isn't it? Right. It's just like with what we were talking about in nutrition. You want to get, make sure you're getting a certain amount. It's good for you, but don't overdo it. Just right. like with the protein, uh, you only need a little bit. It goes a long way. But the sunlight is very, very, very helpful. It's vital for your health, friend. Vitamin D. That's right. And let's, let's, let's look at some of the things. Class, let's go ahead and look at some research here. Mm -hmm. And some proven health benefits of moderate sun exposure. This is good, class. So take some, take, take, take some notes here because I learned something here for myself. Now, the first benefit of sunlight is very fascinating. Class, did you know that when you are exposed to moderate sunlight, the sunlight converts cholesterol into vitamin D. We need vitamin D and it lowers your cholesterol in your blood. That is an excellent benefit. I know because uh, because the uh, cholesterol actually contributes to, especially if it's high cholesterol, heart attacks, strokes and things of that nature. So if you want to decrease your risk of those, Get some sun. Get some sun. Mm -hmm. You can just go out there and it won't cost you anything. It's free. The sun is free. And you don't have to get a prescription for the sun, do you? Right. Just go out in the sun. You don't have to buy the vitamin. You can go out and get some. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You know, vitamin D actually produce vitamin D produced in your body is produced in your body because the sun gives us a lot of benefits. It the vitamin D actually helps you build stronger bones, mm -hmm. healthier bones. Mm -hmm. And that's actually again 
converting that cholesterol into vitamin D. And that's the, that's the natural vitamin D. Amen. Right, right. Amen. Amen. Now, from this, so if you know this, friend, get out in the sun today. Get out there. If you're, if you're, you actually decrease your chances of osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. You actually have a better, better calcium absorption in your body from the vitamin D. Matter of fact, vitamin D speeds up the healing process if the bone is broken. So if you're broken a bone, make sure, don't just lay up in the bed all day, get out in the sun. Get some sun, all right? Now class, did you know that sun actually kills many germs? It actually enhances your immune system function by increasing the number of white blood cells in your body. It kills a germ. Mm. So if you're sick, uh, mm -hmm. it's a very good idea to go outside and get some sun. That's right, get some sun. Let some sunlight come into your house also. Get some sun. The sun again is vital. God put it up there for you for free. He prescribed it, amen? <laughs> I mean, that is, a, we know in the word of God, Jesus is a physician and he prescribes these things for us free of charge and it would not put you into debt, friend. Now, friend, let me ask you a question. Are you suffering from stress? Are you suffering from depression? Do you know someone who does? Now, make sure you listen here. Research has found that sunlight actually soothes the nervous system. It greatly helps someone who is stressed out and suffering from depression. So if you're depressed, Get out in the sun. You need some sunlight. Sunlight actually increases the endorphins. It increases the endorphins in your brain, which allows you to feel better. I think I got a lot of endorphins in my brain right now. It makes you feel better <laughs> emotionally. gives you more stability emotionally. It helps you feel more balanced. Just get out in the sun. Now, Elaine, what are some other health benefits of the sun? Well, it helps to regulate the thyroid function Right, as very well. good, very good. Helps regulate the thyroid function. Mm -hmm. So these are some excellent benefits, but you wanna know this too, friend. It, that thyroid, thyroid protection increases your metabolism. Did you know that? It increases your metabolism, and it's, the, it's your metabolism that actually aids in the burning of unwanted fat and calories. Now I know <laughs> you're gonna get out in the sun now. So it's a great way to burn calories. That's right. You're gonna get out in the sun now because you're gonna burn off that fat. You know, so it's a great way. Mm -hmm. that you can actually add a few of these principles together. If you That's want right. exercise, it's uh -huh. a great thing to go outside. And exercise. And exercise right. and walk in the sun. That's right. That's right. So the sun has some excellent benefits. There's so many more things out there. Now, the question is, how much sunlight should I get? How much sunlight should we get? Now, again, we said you want moderate sunlight. Too much sunlight, too much sun, direct sunlight on the skin itself, it can cause skin cancer. Research has shown. But research suggests that we get at least 15 to 30 minutes of sunlight per day to main, maintain good health. Mm -hmm. So at least, friend, 15 to 30 minutes. People may say, well, that's not enough. That's not really a whole lot. Well, it's really not. Just take time, go outside on your break from your job at work, just go outside, go outside, take a walk. You know, that's a good idea. Just, you know, most people get an hour for lunch, right? Mm -hmm. Take 30 minutes to eat and at least walk for another 30 minutes. Now, some people may say, well, when I drive to work in the car, the sun is beaming, you know, <laughs> through the window. Does, does that count? It doesn't count, friend, I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't count, okay? It does not count. Matter of fact, it's found that 95% of all the useful sun rays or Ultraviolet rays is actually filtered out. It's filtered out by ordinary window glass. So that's not, doesn't count at all. So when you're sitting at your office and the sunlight's coming through doesn't there, count. that doesn't count. It doesn't okay. count. I mean, it's good, but it doesn't count. You need to actually get out and plus get that fresh air. And we'll talk about that later on. You want direct exposure. All right, did you get it? So get out in the sun, friend, but don't have too much. Now, so we see, it's very clear, it's very clear that the sunlight the benefits of sunlight outweigh the negative things of sunlight. So if you're gonna shed a few pounds, friend, again, go out in the sun. So when we get back, we're gonna go ahead and take a break right now. And when we get back, friend, we're gonna look at the fifth key in New Start. We're gonna look at temperance. So friend, make sure you stay tuned. We promise to be right back.
Welcome back, class. Welcome back. I pray that you have been learning something from today's teaching about New Start. So, friend, let's go ahead and continue. Let's jump right back into our study. Let's look at the fifth key to healthy living, the S in the New Start plan, which is sunlight. We actually looked at that before. Now, let's look, let's look at the T, right? Let's look at the T briefly right now. We looked at the sunlight before we left. Now, let's look at the T, which represents temperance. Mm. There was a lot of benefits from the sun, but now let's look at temperance, the T in New Start. Now, how many of you know what temperance is and what, what does it have to do with your health? What is temperance? Now, lifestyle or relationship. Now, in relationship to a healthy lifestyle, temperance has two distinct meanings here, friends. So I want you to notice that here. You probably want to write them down. Now, the first definition of temperance as it relates to health is moderation of things or habits that are good for you. Mm -hmm. Now, the key word here to temperance is moderation. Now, many of you have heard, heard it said before, if it's good for you, I must eat a lot of it. I must have a lot of it. If it's good for you, it's better for you. But the reality, friend, that's not necessarily true. More is not necessarily better. Moderation which is temperance, is best. All the good things that we learned thus far in our series, good nutrition and eating the right foods, exercise, water, sunlight, all are beneficial and necessary for good health. But, but, Aileen, if it's taken to extreme, it's going to be damaging to your health. Mm -hmm. Now, the second definition is something that we need to pay attention to, friend, okay? Okay? Now, that the second definition of temperance is not only, as we said, moderation, but the second definition is total abstinence or avoidance of anything that you know that will harm your health. Health. So, again, it's total what? Abstinence. Abstinence. Which is stopping completely, avoiding altogether. That's right. So this is very important. Remember, again, our bodies belong to who? To God. To God. To God. And we should not do anything, friend, to intentionally damage our bodies. Amen. Now, what are some things or habits that we know, we all know, research has clearly proven in our, in today's society of things that we should just totally stay away from. What are some things that you can name just off the top of your head okay. that we should avoid altogether at total abstinence? Smoking. Smoking. That's one. Drinking. Drinking. Drinking what? Water? <laughs> no. Drinking alcoholic okay. beverages. Right. Okay. Alcohol. Alcohol. Okay. <laughs> Make, Make it clear. Make it clear. Wine, okay. beer, Wine, et cetera. Okay. okay. Um, drugs. Drugs. Okay. Uh, and that includes um, caffeine, That's actually, right. because there's a whole lot more research even now of the harmful effects of caffeine. That's right. That's okay. Right. You want to keep going or can well, I stop just, there? Just stop right there. That's, that's good. <laughs> so these are some things you want to actually avoid. Now, we know that all, we all know that tobacco products cause all types of diseases and cancers. The research is very clear, clear about this. Tobacco is actually the number one drug that kills the most. Did you know, class, that tobacco kills, listen to this, over 450 Americans per year? Mm. That is a terrorist right there. Tobacco, this is outrageous, friend. That is more, that's more people that die. There's more people that die from tobacco than AIDS and illicit drugs and fires and accidents and homicides all put together. Tobacco is deadly, friend. It is truly deadly. And it should be avoided totally, right? So I know many people are, are struggling with this particular issue. But again, the same God that can change your life spiritually Mm -hmm. It's the same God that can help you get off of tobacco. Now, we don't have all the de we don't have all time to go into all the details of how to get off tobacco. But God can give you the power to do it, friend. The now, victory to overcome amen. any he can habit, give you any habit, and, and any habit you have. He can give you the victory. And I can testify to that, friend. Now, let's look at alcohol. What about alcohol? Now, some have said that drinking alcohol in moderation is not bad. Matter of fact, some say it is good for you. But friend, what does the Bible say? Let's see what the Bible says about alcohol real quick. Turn your Bible to Proverbs 20, verse 1. 
Proverbs 20, verse 1. What's it say? It says, Wine is a mocker, mm -hmm. strong drink is raging, and whosoever, that's anybody, right? Anybody. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So you want to be wise, friend, mm -hmm. avoid it. If you don't want to be wise, you're drinking it. But we all know you want to be wise. The wine or strong drink spoken of here, we're talking about fermented alcoholic beverage or wine. Some may be asking, didn't Jesus turn water into wine? Didn't he do it? Yes, he did. He turned water into wine. And we find that in John 2, 1 through 10. But the key thing we must understand here that Jesus did not turn the water into unfermented. He turned it into unfermented, pure grape juice. He didn't make booze, friend. He didn't say, well, uh, you know, make uh, booze for the people and they got drunk. God did not do that. Jesus did not do that. He made it. He made non-alcoholic wine or grape juice. You know, another good example of that is actually in the communion service. Mm -hmm. You know, when people partake of communion, there is the un the unfermented bread. Or the unleavened bread. Un well, actually, the leavening is actually to, is is fermented, and that's, that's why it's unleavened bread. And we we clearly understand that Jesus in that service actually used the unfermented bread, and also it's the unfermented wine as right. well. So when we refer to wine, there are times when in the Bible it's fermented or unfermented, but clearly when Jesus has it as a part of anything that he's partaking of, it's unfermented. Amen. And we can go deep into that too. We don't have time to do that, but that fermentation represents sin or the leavening represents sin. And that's why God says, eat the unfermented bread or the unleavened bread for communion service and the unfermented wine for communion service the purging of all sin. Because that's what, that was supposed to be a representation of him, amen, his body amen, and his amen. blood. I wish I had time to go into that, friend, but we really don't have time to go into that. But we know that alcohol, the, 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 the devastating effects of alcohol, it outweighs any, any, even though I don't see any benefits of it at all, but it outweighs any benefits that some, some may say, because we know statistics make it very clear that over 100,000 American, 100, Americans per year alone are killed because of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Over 100,000. So oh, that wow. doesn't sound beneficial right. to me at all. Right. And really, some of the benefits are actually as a result of the grape juice itself or the juice that's really used in itself. Right. Not the alcohol per se. Right. right. It's the juice. Right. Exactly. 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 And we see that alcohol causes murders. There's a lot of murders as a result of alcohol. Matter of fact, my wife and I, we, we actually had an opportunity to, to, to work in prison ministry for a while. And I just, I remember asking some of the inmates, some of those that were in prison at the time, how many of you were high on alcohol or some type of drug when you did the crime? Did you know that every single hand came up? A hundred percent. So alcohol it is not good, friend. It's a drug. It causes suicides and many other accidental deaths. So we want to avoid alcohol at all costs. And, and it's no also benefits. very devastating to a lot of homes, a lot, a lot of families. Of, exactly, exactly. So, friend, when, you, when you're taking down some alcohol, remember, it's not just about yourself. It's also about your family. That's why health is also important because it's not about yourself. you got to think about others, too, because if you're sick, broke down, People have to take care of you and you're changing their whole lifestyle, too. So it's good to take care of yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's stay away totally from alcohol. All right. There's another drug out there that we should just stay away from, too, is ca caffeine. Believe it or not. I know a lot of people say, I got to have my caffeine. I got to have my coffee. It keeps me moving. And But the reality, friend, this drug, and even though it's one of the most used drugs among adults, even children, this drug is harmful, friend. It is harmful. It's found in coffee. It's found in colas. It's found in all types of soft drink. And yes, friend, it's even found in chocolate. It's found in chocolate. Now, many say, I got to have it. But the reality is the caffeine is not doing anything to your nervous system to help you feel good. Matter of fact, the caffeine is actually causing harm to, uh, to your entire nervous system. Caffeine doesn't calm you down. It actually damages the nerves, right? Mm -hmm. It damages the nerves. So that's another major thing you want to stay away from. 
But let's talk about something you need. All right. You really, really need. And we need to move on to this next this next key to healthy living. And that's air. We all need air to breathe. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to have air. If we don't have air. You die. So it's great to get out in the air to move. You need at least you want to get at least, you know, at least an hour, 30 minutes of fresh air and breathe in deeply. Matter of fact, all all 100 trillion cells in your body. Did you hear this? 100 trillion cells in your body need fresh oxygen or fresh, fresh, clean oxygen every day in order to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Now, it's true. You can you can live a little bit without water. You can live a little bit without food, but you can never live without air. Matter of fact, if you held your breath for about two minutes, you'll probably fall out. So air improves your circulation and improves your concentration. Mm -hmm. You need air. Mm -hmm. Now let's, before we wrap up, we got to get ready to move class. We got to get ready to go. And we got to look at the R, the R in New Start, and that is rest. A lot of people are moving and moving and moving and moving so fast every day. We need to rest every night. We need to get at least six to eight hours of sleep, quality sleep every night. But not only that, you know, God in his word, he's given us a restoration day. And that is his holy Sabbath day, friend, a day to stop all your labors and reflect upon him. This is a great rest every week to stop, stop your work and just reflect totally upon your savior, Jesus Christ. And friend, that takes us to the last point in our study today. And that, of course, is trust in God. Mm -hmm. Without new start, or I should say without God, new start really is not effective. So in order to truly have a new start in life, you must trust in divine power. You must give it all to Jesus Christ. I know some of you all may be struggling right now, but if you give it to Jesus, amen, amen he can help you, friend truly help you. Friend, I pray that you learn a lot from this Bible class and you learn a lot from the series of New Start. There's many things we could have talked about in some other programs. We actually would talk about some of these things in more detail, but we wanted to just overview the all the eight principles for you. So make sure you stick in, stick with us every program so you can learn more, not only from, not learn more about the Bible, Bible truth, and learn more about health in general, because God wants you to prosper and be and get help for you. Well, friend, we got to go. Until next time, on the same great and blessed station, may God bless you all. all.